The National Rolls Royce of China, it's actually a state owned car company and the oldest car company in China, well, it's just launched in Germany. And essentially the Chinese government wants Germans to know that, well, they're coming to take Berlin. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. Uh, this Hong Chi electric, super luxurious, essentially Rolls Royce of China. Yes, state owned car company. You can now buy them in Germany. They're basically saying, you know what? We know you guys have BMW. We know you've got Porsche. We know you've got Mercedes Benz, but this, this is probably even better. Now, I'm not gonna say that it is, but it's interesting the way they're positioning this car. In many ways, Germany, well, they own the world of luxury vehicles. They export them, they manufacture them in Germany. They manufacture a lot of them in China now as well. England's the most prestigious car brands though, uh, Bentley and Rolls-Royce, well, they're now owned by German automotive groups. So it seems only natural for China's most luxurious brand, Hongqi, to enter the German market in order to take on these big guys directly. Hongqi is dubbed the Rolls-Royce of China for its opulent vehicles and increasingly ostentatious design language. It's owned by FAW, China's second largest state-owned car manufacturer. Uh, generally, if you see Yi Jinping, the president of China, he gets around in one of these. In 2018, FAW recruited Giles Taylor, the former chief designer at Rolls-Royce. So, yeah, I mean, the Rolls-Royce designer designs the Rolls-Royce of China. Taylor's influence is evident in the EHS9 electric SUV, whose design hints at his previous work on the Cullinan. Having already established a presence in some European car markets, these vehicles have actually been on sale in Norway for several years now, Denmark and even Iceland as well, Hongqi, well, their introduction to Germany comes as really no surprise. Setting aside the references to Rolls-Royce, I, th I think you can pretty clearly see that there are some. This thing is a really big electric SUV. The EHS9 offers an appealing design with three row layout for seven passengers. It has two battery options. They're both big. One is a 99 kilowatt hour battery. It gives a range of 289 miles, which is 465 kilometers. But the bigger battery, battery pack option is what I think most people will go for. It's a 100 and 20 kilowatt hour pack. It gives it 320 miles, and which is 515 kilometers of range. It's a lot of range for a car this big. Thanks to uh, okay charging speeds, surprisingly slow actually, 140 kilowatt. Uh, apparently you can get 62 miles or 100 kilometers of range in 10 minutes at a fast charging station. Now make no mistake though, this is a massive vehicle. It's even bigger than a BMW X7, bigger than a Toyota Land Cruiser, it's 205 inches long. That's 5.2 meters. In fact, more than 5.2. It's about 5.21 meters. Similar to the Kia EV9 electric SUV, this vehicle has three rows of seating. So there's seven seats, seven passengers. But the vehicle with the this, the version of the car with the bigger battery pack has only six seats. So sort of like four captain's chairs in the back. It's really focusing on being a luxury vehicle. You'd have a chauffeur drive you around and you'd sit in the back in the nice reclined chair, plenty of space, heaps of room in there. It's got LED matrix headlights, adaptive cruise control, some pretty, some pretty nice luxury features. Hongqi aspired to be, you know, a German luxury car brand. To, to, to be honest though, they can have average suspension, poor quality apparently has been a, a phrase I've heard from many journalists. You know, I haven't driven one myself, but that's something that's been mentioned by test drivers. China's oldest brand, though, has a lot of experience to lean on, says experts, and they're saying that um, they're going to have update this vehicle very soon. They're going to provide a better version. It's going to have fast charging. It's going to look even better. It's going to be more kind of a more subtle design. This is a very, very ostentatious looking car, obviously. It's not going to appeal to everyone. So how expensive is it? Well, Starting price is, yeah, it's not cheap. It's 86,700 US dollars starting price. Uh, so that's around 80,000 euros. 
The long range version is 103,000 euros, which is 117,000 US dollars. Meaning the long range version is more expensive than the internal combustion uh, BMW X7, which is 103,000 euros. But yeah, I mean, personally, if I was to choose between an X7, uh, which was internal combustion or this in electric, I'd 100% go for this in electric. Um, I think people would see this and just think, what the heck is that? And it'd be kind of a, amusing to see the look on their faces. They try and work out what brand it is because no one would ever have any clue. So I'd probably remove the badges from the back as well. And guys, it's gonna be interesting to see how this plays out in, in Germany. To be honest, I don't think it's gonna sell particularly well in Germany, um, where really Chinese cars are not having much success. The most successful Chinese car is the Tesla Model 3. Now, of course, Tesla's not perceived as being Chinese, so that's part of the part of the, the you know the advantage that they have. The only other car that's really selling in any significant numbers is the M. G4 because that's perceived to be a British brand even though it's not. Everyone else not really doing that well. Neo for example, nah. Uh, Xpeng not selling. BYD not really selling either. So at this point in time I would say it's going to be really hard for Hong Chi to hit the German car market but hopefully they succeed. Let's see. Thanks for watching.